Good afternoon from Yami B TV. Uh, wishing you all well today. Sending loads of love as usual. Hoping your day and weekend uh, went the best they possibly can. And today's not too bad either. I don't know if you get what I mean. Um, a lot of questions asking my opinion on the fight on Saturday. Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder 3. The trilogy. In all my life, like Ali Fraser, remember, they had a couple of real, they, I think they had two or three um, absolute brutal ones. And I think Fraser won one of those as well, if my memory serves me correctly. But remember the time when he retired on his stool? Uh, we know that I'm getting old now. We know that some people that watch me uh, are my age-ish and will remember fights gone by. Now, I'm watching the fight on Saturday. Uh, I straight away said it was the greatest heavyweight fight I have ever seen. Uh, for sheer what's going to happen next. Uh, Tyson Fury down on the floor a couple of times, but he didn't look, didn't look like he was as knocked down and out as he did in the first fight when he got knocked out uh, right on the final bell because he weren't meant to get up from that, but we know God got him up from that, definitely, 100%. Uh, but, you know, both men, tremendous, tremendous heart. I don't understand why Wilder wouldn't want to shake hands and accept his, his part in it and he don't respect him. Uh, and all that, and he was calling him a cheat, the gloves and all that kind of stuff there. You lost to a better man, uh, Wilder, at the end of the day, and it looks like that he could well have broken your heart as well, because uh, you gave everything that you possibly can, and you've got the best right hand I have ever seen, I think, in my life, and I'm not... Um, <clears throat> um, I'm, not a, I'm not a professional boxer or anything like that. You know, there'd be better better men that know more about boxing than me, but I would say that my knowledge on boxing was pretty high level as well. But I said it was the greatest fight in history. Right. But now I'm looking back and I'm remembering uh, for sheer brutality as well. Eubank, uh, Eubank Ben, the first fight where we went over both middles and that was a but Eubank had to, man, they were both in their prime then. And Eubank stopped Ben. I think it was around about the eighth or ninth time. And again, Ben, um, Eubank versus Watson, my God. Because uh, Eubank was getting done severely. Because you remember the first fight they had uh, was a draw. And now that was given a draw was beyond me. Eubank said at the end of the fight, the reason why I got the draw is because I stayed with Michael Watson. So Michael Watson, uh, um, um, if he doesn't mind me saying so, uh, on the rematch, he said, well, I'm not going to leave it up to the judges' scorecards because I won that fight. I'm going to go all out. And that was an absolutely brutal, brutal fight. Uh, remembering that Eubank, as soon as he got off the floor, because Watson beat Eubank in that fight, or was winning at the time uh, before he was knocked out and tragically ended up in hospital. Uh, but yes... The fight, the brutality, Watson coming forward, he kept coming and coming. He was doing him. And when Eubank finally got the knockdown while he was on the floor, I'll never forget it as well. I think it was 1990. Uh, I think it was while I was in Downsview or Wandsworth. I can't remember, but it was just after the Queen's pardon, if I remember rightly. See, I could always match things with the institutional stuff because that's all uh, certain things remind me of. But remember, he got straight off the floor and delivered a serious uppercut. Uh, that, if you look at it properly, near enough took Michael Watson's head off, in which case uh, he had to be uh, airlifted to hospital and has never been the same since. Uh, ben McClellan also, they brought uh, McClellan over. If you don't know, Gerald McClellan was a man uh, like Julian Jackson a little bit as well, uh, for middleweight, super middleweights, who used to just knock out everybody, but never been a distance or something like that before the uh, Ben fight. But basically, Don King brought McClellan over uh, to bash Ben up, if you want to put it brightly, uh, put it properly. Uh, but the only thing was, if you remember in the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you remember in the early bits of the Ben fight, uh, you, you remember when, when the first fight first started, you got McClellan come clean out of his corner and went bang. And Ben went through the ropes and fell out of the ring. So there was a count being taken place. And I always believed that you got counted out, Nigel. I, I, you know, I supported you. I wanted you to win. Uh, but you died back through and you got through again. And there was a lot of head clashes as well during that fight. And tragically, again, you know, for uh, sheer brutality and having a proper warrior fight, uh, putting everything on the line, so to say, 
uh, Gerald McClellan uh, paid the ultimate price as well, like Michael Watson, and has never been the same since as well. So then we could talk about, you know, um, Hearns Hagler. Hearns Hagler, three of the most brutal rounds that I ever saw in boxing history. Uh, Hagler destroyed him in the end, but Hearns just came out. I mean, we know the hitman Hearns, who's a great, 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 great fighter. Probably one of the greatest of all time. We also know that when Duran... Uh, and Leonard had the first fight. Uh, he went brawl for brawl, didn't he, Leonard? And I think, I can't remember if he got the points decision or whether it was a draw. Uh, but, you know, I had my doubts about um, the the way that result went that day. Uh, some of you correct me on the first Duran-Leonard fight. But on the second fight, um, Leonard said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to trade with him. And he kept dancing, poking his head out. And uh, the famous story about uh, Duran turned his back and said, no maths, no more, because he felt like he was wasting his time because uh, he couldn't land a, bo a glove on uh, Leonard and basically walked out to, walked out to the, walk, walked out of the ring and um, was never the same. Remember, he was from Panama. They wanted to kill him and everything. But um, to compare it with those fights as well, there was a great fight by Ken Buchanan. I think it was way back in the day as well. I think some of you will be remembering that. But for the long rounds... And the build up to the knockdowns, because remember, Fury was down twice in the fourth round. Rock Wilder went down, Fury put him down and then knocked him out. Uh, but he went out and he shielded Wilder. But I lost a bit of respect for you there, big man, because uh, you're supposed to still, because Fury still acknowledged that he was a warrior. Uh, and, you know, whether they could be, that, that's the best trilogy I've ever seen as well. So I'll stick my. Um, I'll stick my neck on the line and say it was the greatest fight that I ever saw uh, for all that was in it. All the swinging of, from throwing to everything to what's going to happen next and everything. Uh, that's my view. But some of you will remember some of those early middleweights because it was the middleweights in them days. Uh, the middles to the super middleweights who had a, the whole, there's like six, seven, eight fighters that could all beat each other. I wasn't even so sure in later life when Leonard finally decided to fight with Hagler uh, and dance all night and make it on points. And Hagler was, again, used to knock out everybody, a brute of a man as well, Marvin, Hag Marvin Hagler. Uh, there was always a fight as well with Hagler and Mugabe the Beast. I don't know if remember, some of you remember that fight as well, where the Beast went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, which, you know, is not the best idea with somebody that enjoys a good old brawl. Uh, but, yeah, in the end, after, we never, the Beast was never, Mugabe was never the same after that. Because uh, Hagler was an absolute brute of a man. Uh, but as a man, sheer guts, pure heart, will alone, uh, fury, never say die attitude. You know why? All right, Muhammad Ali, the greatest, right? We know that's where all this, the jokes, I'm the greatest, where it comes from, you know, in, in prison and everything. We know that I'm the greatest. Watch and see. I predict it, you know, the rounds and all that kind of stuff. Fury has done that on quite a few occasions. And I'd just like to remind everybody that he's also undefeated as well. So whether he got the draw um, in the first fight with Wilder, because uh, he was knocked out, basically. And we know that God got him back up because God Fury man praise regular uh, Tyson Fury. Uh, so I believe that was divine intervention because I could never see a man get knocked like that. Uh, lie down there like that and to you is in the view is in no man's land and you still manage to creep up and you got to draw out of that especially after being knocked out knocked down rather so all three fights uh were you know from tyson in the first fight you know bobbing weaving remember he had a long layoff as well but the second fight he absolutely uh taught him a lesson as well uh, but still Wilder um, held his own. But this one here had me on the edge of my seat. Uh, and I haven't felt that way for quite some time. So I'm reflecting on that. I'm reflecting on that right now. So I'm answering all that question, all, all that my opinion on things. And, if, and the question's also being asked about why am I a Leeds United supporter? If you followed my story for long enough, you would know that I am a fanatical Leeds United supporter. A white cockney, as I used to call myself. I used to get on the school coach, not the school coach, uh, the supporters club when I was a little boy with Mr and Mrs Fudge. Because you remember in those days, the, the coach used to have pick-up points. Uh, come and pick you up and take you to away games. And it wasn't very often that I could go to Ellen Road. And one of those times years ago, uh, I ended up in Leeds. But no, I ended up in Leeds a couple of times, but I'd be more away grounds than I 
have home home games, but I'll be going to a lot now. Uh, and um, oh shit, what was going to say? Um, so yeah, we know that's why. And Peter Lorimer, Alan Clark, Billy Bremner, Johnny Giles, Norman Hunter, Eddie Gray. I used to think I was Eddie Gray running down the left wing, uh, running at people and all that kind of stuff. So I've been a lead supporter diehard all my life. Uh, so you don't have to be, I don't believe you have to be uh, born in a particular place to support the club that you want. But it came about, obviously, because in the early 70s, while I was at school, uh, I used to always want to be Peter Lorimer. Uh, I don't remember some of you Leeds fans whether you remember Tony Curry. Bloody hell, he was magic. He was. You remember the team we had when we had Ray Hankin and Arthur Graham, uh, Brian Flynn and Tony Curry. Curry was one of the best, best midfielders that I ever saw because you remember during that time you had Ray Wilkins, Tony Curry, um, what was the other one? Glenn Oddle. Yeah, during that time, Liam Brady. There always used to be arguments about who was the best centre midfielder at that time. But I had some magic moments watching Tony Curry and he was probably one of my favourites as well. Uh, but I'm going to come up in again in a minute with an educational video as well. Uh, getting ready to travel in a bit. So I'm sending loads of love to you as usual uh, and hoping your day... Just, I'll, I love you all very much uh, and dearly as well.